2020, I decided to try keeping a daily sketch practice. I bought a little A6 daily diary and attempted to draw something small in it every day. You may have seen my video tour of that diary as it's my most viewed video ever, <laughs> by far, but if you haven't, I'll link it in the corner of this video and in the description. Since then, I have attempted the exercise every year and I'm now on my fourth daily doodle diary. Obviously, that one is still in progress, so I won't be sharing it with you yet, although I do post the drawings over on my Patreon every month if you're interested. This video is a tour of my 2022 daily doodle diary, so my third diary. So first, here is an overview of how the exercise went each year. My most successful year to date was that first one, 2020. I managed 272 days out of 366. It was a leap year for all the people who told me off in the comments telling me there are only 365 days in a year, okay. <laughs> Which amounts to about 74% completion for that year. My next year, 2021, was my least successful with only 99 days completed out of 365, or about 27% completion. In part, that was due to the fact that I really disliked the sketchbook diary I had picked for that year. I did record a tour of that diary, but it's only available to patrons for now. And finally, we come to 2022. I completed 211 days out of 365, or about 57% of the year. And then just because I was curious, I also calculated how I was doing for 2023 so far. And up to May 17th, which is the day I'm recording this, I completed 55 days out of 151, or 36% of those 151 days. I was going to make the topic of this video a breakdown of the pros and cons of attempting to build a daily sketching habit, but this video isn't actually all that long and I would prefer to delve into that topic in depth. So let me know if you'd be interested in a longer video on that topic and if you have any questions and I'll put one together. So instead, while you watch me flip through the pages of this diary, here are three lessons I learned by doing this challenge for the last three years and a bit. Oh, one last note before we start, the blue tabs in the sketchbook are markers for ideas I would like to revisit and maybe paint someday, and whenever I did develop the sketch into something more, I will show that result on screen. I also want to note that every lesson I will be sharing are things I knew in theory already, as I'm sure most of you do too, but like for many things in life, I needed to be confronted with the emotional reality of them for them to really sink in, and for me to learn what I needed to learn from them. Anyway, let's go. So. Lesson number one is, make sure to keep your ego in check. I'll be very honest, part of the shine of this exercise is the reaction I get when talking about it. It impresses people, you know? <laughs> and that is, a, I'm not gonna lie, a very pleasant feeling, but it can also be a bit of a trap when our ego focuses more on that feeling to the detriment of other, perhaps more healthy mindsets. Don't get me wrong, I don't think there is anything inherently bad about wanting to impress and about enjoying the glow of our achievements. I'll be the first to tell you to be unabashedly proud of what you've accomplished, but in the context of a challenge like this doodle diary, it's important to keep an eye on our motivations in order for it to remain a healthy exercise that we can garner benefits from, both in the short and long term. Because if the main motivation to keep doing it is external validation and ego fuel, then it can very quickly become toxic and detrimental. So one of the main things I learned from doing this daily drawing exercise has been to separate and compartmentalize what my ego wants me to achieve and what is truly healthiest for me to do. For example, it might be tempting to draw a new concept on each page, but I would burn out real fast doing that. So I learned to be at peace with days when I couldn't draw and let go of the pressure to create something that felt finished to feel accomplished. My ego would like me <laughs> to be resilient and skilled enough to impress with each new page, but that's not what is best either for me or my art practice, and that's okay. Another example is my decision to to not pressure myself to draw on weekends. This is a decision I made when I started my second doodle diary back in 2021. I realized that forcing myself to keep up with the exercise during weekends made the whole thing feel a lot more like work and like a chore. One of my issues is that if I set myself a goal, I start being overly critical of myself if I don't reach the level my ego wants me to reach with it. I find it very hard to be lenient with myself and so I realized that if my goal was to draw every single day without fail, I ended up feeling very unhappy if I didn't manage to keep up every so often. 
Loosening my own rules and officially allowing myself to have some days off has meant that the exercise has stayed fun and light for me even after all this time and that I get what I need from keeping up with it when I do but I don't get weighed down with excessive guilt and shame when I don't. One could argue that this means that the exercise isn't so much about drawing every day anymore, but the point of all this for me is to learn to deal with my own personal toxic mindsets and expectations of myself and heal my attitude towards my art practice where it needs to be healed so as to strengthen it in the long run. It's been really important for me to dig deep and really try to understand what I was trying to achieve with this challenge and whether it was a project born of ego or a true drive to improve my mindset and my art process. As an artist who's able to do this for a living thanks to social media, I have to be extremely careful not to blur the boundary between my personal artistic voice and creating things because I think they'll bring traffic to my content. These things can and obviously do overlap, but overlapping is not the same as merging, and I personally think it an order of high importance to make sure I stay aware of the relationship between my artistic self and my public facing self. That brings me to my next point. So lesson two is do not confuse external validation with personal desire. This point is particularly pressing and relevant, I think, in our age of social media where the main currency is attention and where our value is quietly yet overtly tied to our ability to attract said attention. It's so very easy to start losing ourselves in that attention and begin to confound who we are and what we want for ourselves with what does well and what helps us garner the attention we need, especially as creatives trying to survive and needing to rely on external attention to keep on creating. It can be very tempting to give in to the pressure and create what elicits the strongest reactions from our audiences or others in general and because admittedly that feeling of recognition is delicious and validating to begin to believe that that type of work is what we really want to make for ourselves. I can't stress just how important I personally believe knowing ourselves separately from our public presence is and particularly knowing what brings us the most joy and fulfillment when no external validation is present because those things are what need to be focused on if we want to create a sustainable long-term art practice that we are happy and content in. Knowing yourself intimately, acknowledging what things you need and importantly why you need them is key to building a strong foundation and being able to navigate the social media landscape in a healthy way. In the context of this exercise, I had to learn to separate what I think my audience expects to see in the sketchbook and what would best serve me to create in it. For example, I used to worry about repeating concepts or my drawings being too chaotic and messy for others to understand, but I had to remind myself that this diary is first and foremost a personal exercise and not a performative one. Along the same line, it's so easy to want a sketchbook to look aesthetically pleasing do well presented colourful fully rendered sketchbook pages do better on social media of course are they highly satisfying to create absolutely are they a realistic standard to reach for on a regular basis and are they a healthy expectation to have for yourself not at all one important aspect of sharing our work on social media is learning to be okay with not always sharing work we think is up to snuff I still struggle a lot with that, I'll be honest, and it does create a lot more work for me than is necessary, but that is another thing this diary exercise is helping me work through quite effectively. Since I post these doodles on Patreon regularly, it would be easy for me to want every single drawing to be interesting and entertaining, especially because I feel I owe my patrons so much that posting stuff that I feel is not necessarily perfect feels a little bit wrong to some extent. But getting used to posting my sketches even when they aren't all that special and being forced to to some extent because my daily doodles simply cannot always be the best sketches I make has helped me a lot with giving them the value they deserve because they mean I managed to put pen to paper that day which sometimes is the only victory I need to feel like I'm moving forward. It's also more honest overall and ultimately I strive to be as honest and genuine as I can and that means being able to show the kinks and dents alongside the polished and the perfect. And so this brings me to my last point. Joy is an important but overlooked achievement. Joy is a deeply personal experience and I truly believe that one of the best types of joy happens in moments of intimate and genuine connection with ourselves without like the screen of expectations or like the mist of ego. <laughs> that doesn't mean it can only happen when we're alone but more that it's the kind of joy that requires us to be truly connected with who we are to be experienced. 
And art is such a perfect medium to connect with ourselves and therefore experience that feeling. The fabulous thing about that kind of joy is that it bleeds through and others can feel it too simply for us experiencing it and sharing what brought us to feel that way. But it's a feeling that can be hard to reach sometimes, uh, at least I know that I struggle with it sometimes, especially when like the world we have to navigate looks down on it as like childish or superfluous or as having <laughs> no economic value. Because all the art I make is linked to my ability to make money and survive, um, the joy it brings me can sometimes quite easily be overshadowed by the burden it bears to the point where I can too easily lose sight of it. So I started this daily drawing exercise in an effort to reconnect with that joy because it's absolutely essential to my sanity <laughs> and it has been the hardest element to hang on to all this time honestly. If I'm not careful I can easily slip back into a mindset that prioritizes productivity and like hyper efficiency and create goals for this diary that turn it into a chore rather than a pleasure. It's a mindset slippery slope that can happen to basically any area of my work and it would destroy my enjoyment of what I do in the long run. So it's therefore essential that I have something to remind me of how crucial being able to find joy in my practice is and this small daily exercise has been a really great vehicle to practice that. Yeah, those are the three things I learned while doing this daily doodle diary challenge. And while these might perhaps seem like simple things to you, or perhaps things that should go without saying, I'm a perfectionist people pleaser with a tendency towards self-deprecation, who emotionally believes everyone else has a more valid opinion than me, but also over-intellectualizes everything. So those lessons were hard for me to learn and truly feel in my bones, if that makes sense. The theory of them always rang true, but I had not yet experienced the emotional realization of them and this daily drawing practice has helped me a lot with acknowledging some of my shortcomings and grow in a more healthy direction in my practice as an artist. I hope to be able to keep at it for a number of years to come and I look forward to sharing the lessons I learned with you along the way. I would love to know if anything I said in this video resonated with you in any way and I would also love to know what you thought of this sketchbook tour. I know a few of you attempted the challenge yourself after my first video and I would love to hear how it went or how it's going for you if you're still doing it or if you're attempting it for the first time. Make sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to see my drawings from this year's Doodle Diary or watch the video tour of my 2021 diary. And in the meantime, thank you ever so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone!